Amanza Egekeza, professional basketball player. Get it. <laughs> Spike ball tournament, like, uh, which actually is, I found out after, is like a big, big thing in, in the South, in the States. You just, you can't get too high or get too low ever about anything, you know. So that's, especially for young kids, that's the part that, that separates the good players from the really good players is, oh, so I'm shooting today? Is that what we're doing? Okay, man. Thank you for being here. Absolutely, no problem. Yeah. Can you tell me about about yourself? Uh, well, I grew up in Chicago, Illinois, uh, the outskirts of the city of Chicago. Um, grew up there my whole life. My parents were from Nigeria. They moved to the States when they were like 19, 20 years old, so probably like college age. You know, bat, I think basketball has always been kind of a, a part of my life growing up ever since I was little. Just uh, watching like the Chicago Bulls on TV, like my earliest memories um, when they were really good in, their, in the mid 90s. Jordan. Jordan off the double team. Again, able to line drive it. He has 24. Jordan able to beat Anderson off the dribble. If I understood right, you you have uh, have always been involved in involved with basketball. You said like you watch watch watched uh, Chicago Bulls games. Okay. Yeah, yeah, been involved always. Uh, I, I didn't start playing organized basketball till probably um, maybe like sixth grade. So like I don't know, 13 ish years old. Um, so most of it was just watching from afar, admiring it from afar. Um, a lot of how I developed was just mimicking what I saw on TV, you know, and just seeing uh, how they, they moved and did things and, and just kind of picking it up at an early age. So I think that's where the love of the game started for me. When, when did you realize that you want to play basketball? When you, like, this, this, this idea came in your mind, like when you just um, just watched watch the game and then think like, okay, I, I will be trying. Yeah, I think once I got to like uh, elementary school, I, I you know, really felt like I, I, w I wanted to play. I wanted to be a basketball player. Um, I was always the tallest in my class uh, <laughs> growing up. So that obviously people would kind of push me in that direction. People were like, oh, you're tall, you should play basketball. So. It's always like just been a part of my life. I can't really remember a time where I wanted to do anything else other than basketball, you know, so. Um. People just kind of look up to you. I feel like being tall kind of demands like some kind of respect a little bit. So I think that's kind of cool. Talk to me about your thoughts on airplanes. Airplanes, you see, I am actually very scared of heights. Um, I find that to be a thing with most tall people. Most tall people seem to be you know, afraid of heights, but people are like, oh, well, you're a height. We're like, it doesn't work the same way. But yeah, I hate airplanes, hate. Uh, did you play in high school? I did, yeah, I played, played there for four years. Um, good experience there. Um, Huntley High School, shout out to Huntley High School, HHS. <laughs> It was a big step for you when you joined join, join the college in terms of basketball? Yeah, it was. That, that was the first major, uh, I would say the major step in my journey to becoming a pro. Obviously, uh, in the States, it's very competitive, the basketball scene. Very few kids get to go play college basketball, uh, especially at the Division One level, which, which I was able to play at. So uh, it was definitely a blessing. It was, um, it's kind of funny how everything worked out. It, it was, um, I think a lot of times the school you choose matters a lot. And some some guys choose, you know, make the wrong decision with the school they go to and um, maybe they have a bad experience and, and, and it derails their 
their ability to play professionally. So, but I was I was fortunate that had a good si uh, system around me, support system, and I was able to make uh, a wise decision for myself and uh, ended up going to Belmont University um, in Nashville, Tennessee, and it was a great maybe one of the best basketball decisions I've ever made um, because I played for a great coach, great program, winning program. So I learned how to play the game the right way. And it was a huge impact on my development as a player. So I'm always very, very grateful to my time there and my experience there. Some, some favorite shooting drill? Can you show me? Yes, I do. Uh, it involves a little bit of movement, but um, I usually do it from the three-point range. So it's basically the goal is to try and go seven, uh, make seven out of ten shots. I always like drills that involve some kind of uh, goal because I think it, it makes you forces you to focus and lock in on certain things, mechanics and everything. So this drill is pretty simple. You end up doing like five different types of shots on both sides. Okay, let's try. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Back. Stand still. Ah, still. Yep. Okay. Yep. Stationary. Yo, you got it. Go off. Yep. Then go down. Yep. Yep. Nice. And then stand still. Yep. Nice. They can roll. Roll. There we go. Now that's up. <laughs> nice. Stand still. Uh -huh. yep. 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 Good. There you go. Got you. Lift. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Gotta finish with a bang. Yeah. Oh. There it is. Nice. <laughs> Insta. Yep. What was your favorite subject in the college and what was your first? Favorite subject in college. Ooh, this is going back now. I really enjoyed an entrepreneurship class I did. Um It was called uh, event management or something. Uh, it, it's pretty self-explanatory. We had to basically, uh, there were like three or four major assignments the whole year and we just had to plan events. Uh, so my favorite thing that we did, event, we chose to plan a spike ball tournament, like uh, which actually is, I found out after, is like a big, big thing in, in the South, in the States. So okay. we held this, you know, got got a venue, got a field, and did all the organizing stuff, and uh, ended up having a really good turnout. A lot of teams, I didn't know spike ball was such a big deal, but we actually had like the number one spike ball team in the nation that showed up to our thing, and so it was kind of a cool thing. Stuff. Um, so that was that was a cool class. I also enjoyed uh, world religion. Uh, that was a fun class for me too, just, just learning about um, just other religions and stuff, and, um, Yeah, obviously I know what I believe, but it was just cool to see the, you know, how the similarities and differences between between yeah. uh, other religions. And my worst, <laughs> yeah, my, yeah, my, I mean. my, my least favorite, <laughs> I'll say my least favorite was probably uh, business law. <laughs> Unfortunately, I love my teacher for the class, but I just it was a tough class for me. And there's just so much that went into it and uh, wasn't my strongest uh, <laughs> performance in the classroom. So <laughs> Ooh. OK, 
okay, I understood like when you um, when you realize that you can become a basketball player, but uh, what about a professional professional uh, level? How when you realize it? When you can become become mm -hmm. after after college, I think yeah. Yeah, I think I would say like towards the end of my junior year and throughout my senior year of college is when I started to. I'd always had a feeling like, okay, this is what I want to do, but then it actually became real. Like I felt um, all throughout that season, I was agents were reaching out to me, um, as you know, just kind of doing the early introductions, and so that's when I kind of felt like, all right, this is, it's it's realistic. It's not a matter of if it's going to happen. It's just a matter of like when and how it's going to happen. So I would say. My senior year of college, especially, it was my best year, and um, so that's when I knew that it was a real possibility. Can you tell me about your beginning, beginning of your career? Um, did you immediately start start to play a lot, or how does it look like? Um, so, the beginning of my career was uh, kind of rocky, a little bit of roller coaster, up and down, lots of highs and lows. I started my career in Japan, actually, which is not where a lot of rookies start. It's a very Uh, I guess veteran dominated league, dominated league. Mm -hmm. you have a lot of a lot of guys uh, in the tail end of their career play like play style wise uh, wise I wasn't the best fit there mm -hmm. um, they usually take a lot of like big fives and I'm more of like a four almost like a three sometimes at, at, over there so I was kind of a misfit in that league but but um and, and I was a rookie so there's a lot that I didn't know it was my first time playing uh, international basketball so big learning curve for me and um, so I, I played for my first team in Yokohama it was rocky there our team wasn't very good we lost a lot of games I, i had some good moments you know I, i think i was like first or second in the team in scoring for most of the most of my time there but the league was very cutthroat so unfortunately we weren't we weren't performing that well so usually when that happens they just kind of get rid of the americans and so i got cut from there ended up getting picked up by another team in the league which is one of the top teams um as the kind of the third american so i, I would play sometimes and sometimes I wouldn't play you know mm -hmm. so I was practicing mostly and and that was challenging too because you don't always know when your number's going to be called and you don't always know and but I, I performed well there too and but that was that was a one month contract so I had a, a feeling like all right it's going to be a short stay anyway so once that one month was over I ended up in another team in that league and finished the season there Oh. Also as a third American, so a lot of periods where I was playing a lot and then I wasn't playing, but I ended up learning a lot that year, and it was it was a great experience, honestly, and uh, helped shape you know a lot of the rest of my career, um, just learning how to deal with the adversity and um, learning how to be professional. More importantly, okay, what what is your favorite move? Can you show me? Favorite move? Yeah. yeah so it's funny because I I can't. I can't actually do this in Europe because it's a travel. Ah. But in the States, you know, this is, <laughs> this is allowed. Um, I mean, you could probably do it in Europe. It just depends how you got to do it fast so yeah. they don't call it a travel. But I like, uh, it's called a rocker step. I like uh, my trainer. It's one of my favorite moves that he's taught me. And I like to do it in the mid post when I have a slower defender on me. So I catch it here, I face up. And it's kind of like a jab, but I go like this. Boom, uh -huh. boom, like that. So I like shift my body weight two times and and go. So full speed, it kind of looks like this. Boom, 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 to the rim. Okay, I pass, I turn, boom, boom. Yeah. And yeah, so I kind of, how I think of it is I try to touch uh, both my knees with the basketball. So when I face up, I stay low, boom, yeah. boom. Just get to the outside of your frame and then and then rip across. It's called a rocker step. I, mean, I still low. See, like Kobe would do it a lot. You boom, know. boom, like to start. Yeah, and then rip over the top. Yep. 
Have you played in for Nigerian uh, national team? Yes, yeah, I've had the privilege to play with the Nigerian national team uh, four or five windows. I can't remember exactly. Also, I was that with them in the Olympic uh, training camp mm -hmm. uh, a few years ago for when they were preparing for the Tokyo Olympics. So, um, so that so that was cool. It's a good experience. Um, great guys. That's always that's always the best part is the relationships you make. Meeting a lot of guys who grew up just like you, a lot of guys who have ties back to Nigeria. So I've gotten to play with them. Uh, did you play in uh, your your Nigeria teams? I'm sorry. Uh, did you play in your your Nigeria team? Yours? Yours. Like young. With oh, with the youth, youth. 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 Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Are you good? <laughs> um, so no, they, I don't. They actually, to my knowledge, they don't have a youth national uh, team. And I think that's kind of the next step for the next evolution for uh, for our is having a more organized youth national team. Uh, I think it's in the works, but hopefully in the next few years we'll start to see more at the 18, 17, 16 yeah. you know, levels. So have you have you always always played have as a point forward? Uh, yeah, more of a more of a power forward. I've always been more of a kind of a stretch for, you know, um, pick and pop guy. So, but I've always had the ability to do a little bit of both. Like in, in high school, I played mostly five because I was taller Tall, than everybody. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm used to playing them in the post. That's where my most of my post moves and everything had came from, just from years and years of playing in high school. So I feel like I've always been a pretty well-rounded basketball player for, for my size, I guess, for my position. Um, and I'm a little bit maybe quicker than most uh, fives, so I have the ability to sometimes be a matchup problem depending on the team we're playing. Walker vastasi, eikä se käyttää, kun tila aukeaa ja Amanze keke se osen paikalle ja kumpa sisä pelaajaksi. Keke se lähellä rautaa ja pakki päälle. Tuplalla uhkaa Cleary, keke se tekee, keke se juttuja, mutta tänään. Parasta <laughs> You are captain of uh, Finnish basketball team, Qatar Basket, where, where you played. Uh. <laughs> basketball is fun. Have fun. If you can enjoy this, there's nothing else, man. Nothing else can guarantee you can enjoy this shit, man. Let's go get it up. Yeah. Come on, Zion, three, one, two, three. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Um, what do you think about like Finnish basketball in general? Yeah, uh, I think Finnish basketball is it's a uh, it's it's good quality basketball. Um, I didn't know what to expect when I came here last year. It was my first year here, but um, I played against actually some Finnish players in other countries, like France, for example. Mm -hmm. I, I I remember playing against a couple of uh, Finnish Finnish players, and they've always had a reputation um, as you know smart, high IQ uh, players. So. Yeah. I kind of knew that coming in, and and I've definitely noticed that uh, throughout the league, especially with the top teams. It seems like uh, the co coaches have a general sense of like the right way to play, and it's great for for a lot of uh, imports, especially so most most imports in this league are like first, second. Um, obviously, you have some experienced guys too, but it's a great first place for a lot of guys to be because you learn kind of how to play the right style of basketball and it's also gives you the freedom to kind of um, 
expand your game and, and show everything you can do too. So it's a great mix of both. And I think the, the, the league is very competitive top to bottom. Um, it's not a crazy thing to see maybe a bottom team have a good night and, mm -hmm. and beat a top team. So I think it's always, it's competitive and that's what you want to see. And uh, I think it's trending in the right direction as well. So another move I like is uh, it's kind of like a fake, fake handoff when I'm, when I have the ball at the top of the key, dribble handoff, ball gets swung to me. I kind of fake like for my guard to come get the ball. And then I like, I like to turn it to the rim. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You got the ball. You got the ball. Yep. There you go. Uh -oh. There you go. Nice. Valtalaisse syntyinen, mutta omaa nigerialaiset sukujuuret ja omaa erinomaisen ponnistusvoiman. Uh, do you have some kind of ritual before the game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very, I've gotten a lot more, uh, I would say more routine. I wouldn't say ritual, but more like I have a, a much more defined routine over the years. Um, usually starts with, obviously we'll have morning shoot around. Um, I'll come back. I'll usually, uh, actually, I'll spend some time. I, I like to read my Bible, uh, you know, to start, kind of start my day. And then I'll usually have a time where I'm just like praying and, and just kind of meditating, getting, getting ready, getting my mind right. Have that. It's, I think it's important to have that quiet time for me, um, uh, for my faith as well. So I'll do that. And then I'll eat. Uh, eat a big meal. I eat a lot, so <laughs> I'll eat my big pregame meal, and then I have to get my. Um, well, I'll put my legs up also. I like to put my leg up, legs up to let the blood flow and get, get some circulation. And then I'll take my pregame nap, which is very important. I need at least an hour and a half to two hours um, for me to be feeling my best. Then I'll head to the gym usually biking in the snow, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. always fun. <laughs> so head to the gym about hour 15 before tip off. I'll start my stretching, you know, I'll do kind of my stretching routine, um, get the legs going and then I'll head out. And, uh, even, even in terms of the shots I'm taking and I'm very methodical about, it. I have a certain amount of makes I make from each spot and then, Ooh. I think it's a good question. <laughs> uh, when you're in the, that moment failing and uh, you need to keep going, uh, what do you say? Uh, what do you say uh, for yourself? Yeah, I think one of my biggest mottos that's helped me throughout the years. It's not always easy, but you just you can't get too high or get too low ever about anything, you know. So no matter if I'm playing really well or if I'm not playing so well. You, I try to stay somewhere in the middle mentally all the time. Um, and I think that's what helps me. Uh, I think a lot of times if you focus too much on the result, it, that's when you, you miss those opportunities and that's when you actually end up failing sometimes is when you're too worried about the end result instead of the process and just kind of staying present and mm -hmm. being ready for whatever happens next. So. I always try to recenter myself and just kind of, um, I've always felt there's a fine balance between, because we're all competitive, you know, when you're on the court, you're very competitive. You want to, you want to win, you want to play well, you want to do all these things, but it's a, it's a fine balance that I've found between wanting it really bad, but also kind of not caring about the result. You kind of have to be somewhere in the middle where like whatever happens, you're going to be fine. And then that actually allows you to play at your best and, and hopefully have success. So uh, that's something I've, I've found that helps me mentally. Yeah, I think it's yeah, I think it's it's great, great because like you keep like keep in the middle. Yeah, like, if you fail or you like think like you you're so yeah too too tough. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> too tough. Yeah. You mean in the middle because every, right. every, everything can 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 happen. Nopeasti nyt häneltä pallo pois, Permanto EGGC kolmonen ilmassa ja heittää se korin, ottaa vapari päälle, neljän pisteen hyökkäystä tarjolla Katajalle. What you, you would, would recommend for the person who wants to play basketball, like no matter young or like some older, what you, what you would recommend? 
Well, I would say if you're serious about basketball, um, however hard you think you're working right now, you have to work harder. Um, <laughs> I think a lot of kids don't understand how much time and, and effort goes into it. Basketball is my job right now, but as a kid, you know, growing up, nothing has changed, like from high school and college, nothing has changed that much with me about my approach to basketball. It's always, it's a job now, but it, it felt like a job when I was in high school because it wasn't a, oh, I, I don't feel like playing basketball today, so I'm not gonna play. Like, I treated it like I had to do it. Like, high school, college, like, it's just a part of my life. Like, I, it's just what I'm doing, so I have to do it. And I think that's, especially for young kids, that's the part that, that separates the good players from the really good players is, um, is just prioritizing it over other things. You know, you do have to sacrifice a lot. Sometimes, you know, your weekends, you can't do what other kids are doing. You have to stay locked in. You got to get your rest. You could, maybe you have a tournament you're going to play in. So you always got to have basketball uh, as a priority. And I would say the other thing too is when you are training, when you are in the gym, a lot of times it's about uh, working smarter, not harder and maximizing your time in the gym. You know, don't just be in the gym um, just doing nothing. Everything has to be focused and you have to have direction about everything you're doing. Um, it's important for, for kids to, if you're able to have a trainer, if you're able to have someone to work out with and help you out, I think that's, that's, that's a great thing. And just making sure you're working on the right things that will actually translate to the game and then doing them at game speed, you know? So it's a lot of little things, but it adds up and it makes all the difference. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a um, uh, good advice, but uh, sometimes like, uh, like some, sometimes you don't have a coach with, with you. Like you need to, if you want to do something, uh, like you can, you can do it. It's like, you can work smart. You, you just need, need to need to work. What you do, what yeah. do you think about it? If, like about, sometimes you don't, don't have a coach near. Like yeah, you just kind of ball and two hands. <laughs> yeah, it kind of it kind of goes back to what I was saying before about like there's somewhere in the middle, right? You don't want to overthink it either. You yeah. don't want to just think too much about oh, I need to have the perfect trainer or the perfect this. Like there's no there's no magic workout that's gonna make you better at basketball. Like mm -hmm. there's no one. If you watch the best players in the world uh, train, they're doing a lot of simple stuff. Most of even the guys with the most elaborate skill sets, like you know the Kyrie Irvings and guys that are just doing all these nice, fancy moves, Steph Curry, all these things. You see the end result, but like the work is pretty simple. It's just focused. Is everything is sharp? Everything is fundamentally sound, and that's what a lot of kids need to understand. Is like the the fundamentals and the basics and mastering those things is what's actually going to separate you from the, the rest and so i think you're right it, it don't overthink it too much just do something even just having a ball in your hand and going out to shoot and maybe having a friend with you if you have a friend have them rebound for you take turns just shoot a bunch of shots just something something and just to keep that feel so <laughs> Sometimes, like some 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 kids, like when come come in the gym, just uh, just uh, shoot three three, po three points and yeah. and that's it because no one is uh, try to to do some buckets for under yeah. under, under, under wing, but Form shooting is <laughs> the most important thing. E even even for me, even for me, I've 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 been getting better with it with time. Even the last three four years, I've I've started to. I would always hear, like, I, you know, I watch basketball podcasts and I hear guys talk about their routines, right? And I, I didn't used to understand it. I, I would hear them talk and it's like, maybe it goes in one year and out the other. But I'm actually, now that I'm starting to develop my own routine, I'm actually starting to see the, the benefits, like the results of like, oh, this is not, they're not just saying it because it sounds good. Like, having a routine that works for you is a huge difference maker. 
it, it keeps everything. It almost makes things robotic. Like you just you just reacting naturally to things, um, and that's because you you're just training the same way and just and uh, re resharpening the tools. So yeah, I think having a routine and just having focused reps, whatever you're doing, you know. Have fun, don't be, but don't be like laughing or joking around or messing around too much when you're training. When, when you're in the gym, focused reps, like lock in. You could get a lot more done in 45 minutes than somebody else might get done in two hours if you're just focused. It's not so much about how long you're in the gym, it's like how hard are you working in the time that you are in the gym, so. Yeah, yeah man. That works. I appreciate it. Yeah, man, for sure, nice. We did, Hope, uh, we did a good job. Yeah, that was good. It's good. Thank you for watching and appreciate it.